back to Teacher Gimbal Channel. Today we'll be going over our illustrative math geometry unit 2 lesson 7 practice. If you like this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. You can find the subscribe button in one of these corners. You tell me which one. And also, remember to check out our new website if you're a teacher or not a teacher, which is www.rateyourprincipal.com. All right, let's get started. Lesson number 7, problem 1. What triangle congruence theorem could you use to prove that triangle ABE is congruent to triangle CBE? So, if you remember, we have a bunch of different triangle congruence theorems. Remember, the A in these congruence theorems stands for angle, and the S stands for side. The other thing to remember is that order matters. So, angle side angle means an angle with a side in the middle and an angle on the other side, versus angle angle side means the two angles have the side not in between them. And I think we're going to see some examples of this. So if you're not sure, just follow along. So we are looking to prove that triangle ADE is congruent to triangle CBE. So what I see right here is I see a pair of congruent angles. So I'm going to write an A on it. I see a pair of congruent sides that are marked. So I'm going to write an S on it. And then, I don't see another pair marked, but I know from prior lessons that because of vertical angles, those two angles are congruent to each other. So right here, I see another pair of angles, which tells me I have angle, side, angle, and that's the congruence I'm going to use. Do you see how the side is in between the two angles? That's what we want. All right, let's go on to the next question. Problem number two. Han wrote a proof that triangle BCD is congruent to triangle DAB. How can Han fix his proof? So let's look at our diagram first. We have DC is parallel to AB. Now whenever I have parallel lines, I always like to extend them, especially in proofs about triangles, because if you see your parallel lines, you generally have a trans hidden transversal floating in there. So when I extend my lines, I can see my transversal a little bit better. So line AB is parallel to line DC and cut by transversal DB. We already got that. So angle CDB, CDB, and ABD are alternate interior angles, ABD, and must be congruent. True. Side DB is congruent to side BD because they're the same segment. Also true. So that side, it's a shared side, so it's congruent to itself. That's called the reflexive property. Angle A is congruent to angle C because they're both right angles. Also true. By the angle side angle triangle congruence theorem, triangle BCD is congruent to triangle DAB. So let's check it out. We got these guys that are congruent because they're right angles. We have these guys that are congruent because of our alternate interior angles. And we have a side that is congruent because of our shared side. So let's look at one triangle right here. So I'm only focusing on the black triangle. I see an angle, I see an angle, and I see a side. Order matters. He said angle, side, angle. To fix his proof, he would have need to, needed to say angle, angle, side. Because if we notice, the side is not in between the two angles, so therefore it's not angle side angle, but instead angle angle side. All right, pause this video if you need to go over it. Let's go on to the next one. Problem three. Segment GE is an angle bisector of both angle HEF and angle FGH. Prove triangle HGE is congruent to triangle FGE. So, GE bisects HEF. Bisect means to split into two equal pieces. So we know that the big angle HEF is split into two equal pieces. Um, HEG is congruent to angle GEF because angle bisectors create congruent angles. I'm speaking out what the answers are, so write down if you need to write it down as I go along. And angle FGH, we have FGH, so it also bisects FGH, which tells me these two angles are going to be congruent because of our angle bisector. 
will be congruent to angle EGF. Finally, we have the shared side right in the middle, which tells us EG is congruent to GE. So let's look what we have. We have an angle that are congruent, we have a side that is congruent, and we have a side that is congruent. So we can prove that triangle HGE is congruent to triangle FGE because of angle side angle. And we're done. Let's go on to the next one. Problem number four. Triangle ACD, ACD, okay, that's the big triangle, and triangle BCD, BCD, that's that inside triangle, are isosceles. Angle BAC has a measure of 33 degrees and angle BDC has a measure of 35 degrees. Find the measure of angle ABD. So let's make this a little bigger real quick. Um, last time I did a question like this, I did a lot of extra work. So we're gonna try to do less extra work. We know angle BAC has a measure of 33 degrees. BAC, so that is 33 degrees right in there. Then we have the measure of the angle BAD, uh, trying to zoom in as much as possible. Then we have the measure, oops, 33 degrees. Then we have the measure of angle BAD, B, no, BDC. BDC is 35 degrees. We want to know the measure of angle ABD. ABD. So this is the guy we want to know. So let's think. If he's 35 degrees and this is an isosceles triangle, that means the angle over here is also 35 degrees because the base angles of an isosceles triangle are congruent. We can then solve for this guy right here, who I'm going to name x, because 35 plus 35 plus x equals 180 degrees, and we know all triangles sum, the interior angles, the inside angles, sum to 180 degrees. Now, as I was talking, I solved for that angle right there, but pause the video if you need to go over to look at that math. So x right here is equal to 110 degrees. Okay, what is next? We know that we want angle ABD. Um, so it doesn't come to me immediately exactly what I'm supposed to do next. So we're gonna think about this together. We know he's 35 degrees, 33 degrees. And we also know that the big triangle is an isosceles triangle, which tells me that this angle over here has to be congruent to this angle right here. Now, 33 degrees, 110 degrees, mm, 35, 35, Let's read the question again. We have triangle ACD, ACD, and triangle BCD are isosceles. Angle BAC, BAC has a measure of 33 degrees, and angle BDC, BDC has a measure of 35 degrees. Find the measure of angle ABD. Well, so let's look at these two triangles right here. I got stuck because there was no other angles I could immediately solve for. So I went to go look at my triangles. So I'm gonna look at that pink guy and I'm gonna look at this pink guy right here. What do I notice? I see this side is congruent to that side. I see this side is congruent to this side. We've got a shared side right here which gives us a third side that are congruent, which tells me by SSS, both of my pink triangles are congruent. If they are congruent, that means if this is 33 degrees, then this one right here is 33 degrees. And it tells us this whole big one right here has to equal 66 degrees because it's those two angles together. So I had to use my congruent angles for this question. Now, I'm gonna look at my big triangle. I'm gonna call this blue angle right here, I'm gonna call him Y, 
And we know he's the same measure as this blue angle right here because it's an isosceles triangle. So we have two y's. So if I'm looking at that big black triangle, this one's 66, this one's y, this one's also y. And I know if I add them all together, it should equal to 180 degrees. I sum my y's to get two y's. I subtract my 66 from both sides to isolate my y. My 2y comes down, my 66 crosses out. I end up with 113, 114, I apologize, 114. And then I divide both sides by two and I am going to get 57 degrees. y is equal to 57 degrees, which I am going to put down y is equal to 57 degrees, y is equal to 57 degrees. Now, I know that if y is equal to 57 degrees, then this guy right here is 35. So this guy over here, dot, dot plus 35 is equal to 57 degrees. So I'm gonna subtract 35 from both sides, so five. And I get that the dot right there is equal to seven minus five is two, five minus nine is two is 22 degrees, right there. Finally, to get my question mark, I know that 22 degrees plus question mark plus 33 degrees, because I'm looking at this triangle right here, has to equal 180 degrees. Let me get rid of that SSS for now. 33 plus 22 is gonna get me 55 plus question mark is equal to 180 degrees. I subtract 55 from both sides and I get question mark is equal to, let's cross out the eight, make it a seven, 10, five, and then 17 minus five is 12, 125 degrees. All right, I know my work jumps from place to place. Some people like to write neater. I kind of like to write where there is space. What I recommend if you're having a hard time with this, pause, rewatch this video and go ahead and make sure you're following along each step. And then finally, do it by yourself and see if you can do it all on your own. Now let's look at problem number five. Which conjecture is possible to prove? A conjecture is a mathematical statement that we're not sure if it's true yet. A, all triangles with at least one side length of five are congruent. So I always like to say, let me see if I can come up with an example. That has one side length of five. That has one side length of five. They are not congruent. Cross it out. All pentagons with at least one side length of five are congruent. A pentagon has five sides. That could be a length of size, five. One, two, three, four, five. Also a pentagon with a side length of five, not congruent. All rectangles with at least one side length of five are congruent. That could be a side length of five. That could be a side length of five. They are not congruent. Which tells me this guy is true. Well, let's check them out. All squares with at least one side length of five are congruent. Well, if one side's five, the definition of a square is all the sides are five. So if my other square is five, all the sides are five. And if you remember, all the angles in a square have to be right angles because that's the definition of the square. So that is true. That is the only one that we can prove. Let's go on to problem number six. We only got two questions left. Andre is drawing a triangle that has that is congruent to this one. He begins by constructing angle LKJ. What is the least amount of additional information that Andre needs to construct a triangle congruent to this one? So he's taking a triangle. He has constructed LKJ. Well, we need, we have an angle, so we're going to need either a side or another angle. Um, let's do another angle. So he would need to know what this angle is. So that's one piece of information. And then finally, he would need to know a side. Say he would know this side right here. So if he knew this angle, that's an angle. And if he knew this side, that's a side, he would have enough for angle, angle, side. And that's it. Problem number seven. Here's a diagram of a straight edge and compass construction. C is the center of one circle and B is the center of the other. Which segment has the same length as segment CA? Uh, so if you remember, if 
to a different color, all radiuses in a circle are the same length. So if CA is a radius of circle A and CD is a radius of circle B, then they have to be congruent. So CA, CD. Uh-oh. Well, <laughs> that's not on our answer list. So we did find congruent segments, but we're not done yet. So what else do we know? Let's look at the small circle. Well, we know BA has to be congruent to BD because they're radi radiuses of the smaller circle. I also know that this right here is a shared side, uh -huh. which tells me by side, 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 triangle CAB is congruent to triangle C. Uh, order is important, so I said CAB, so that's going to be CDA, CDB, I apologize. Um, and we want to know which segment has the same length as CA. Oh, CD? No, CD is not an option. Is it BA? No. Is it BD? No. Is it CB? Oh, wait, CB is also a radius. Huh, we didn't have to do all that work. I just wasn't paying that close attention. CB is also a radius of the same circle, so we're done. So I proved the triangles are congruent. That wasn't necessary. If you like this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. Check out our website, rateyourprinciples.org, and I will see you in the next one.